All right, uh, my name is Martin. I'm at the meeting show. I'm with uh, Miguel Neves. Nice to see you, Martin. Who is here from uh, his new venture, uh, the Social Media Chefs. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you've got lots of experience with social media. I know you're from big shows in the industry where you've been uh, quite active. And thanks for being here and, and sharing some of your secrets with the uh, meeting planners out there. <laughs> So sure. what's happening? What's new? What's what's cooking? What's cooking? Uh, the good. E excellent. I like it. Um, so I set up social media chefs uh, and I call myself the head chef because I like to use the cooking analogy for social media. As, as you mentioned, I, I worked for IMAX for six years and I still work with them on a, on a consultancy. And so I've got a little bit of experience in the sort of B2B uh, business to business side of events uh, in the industry. And uh, the idea of the cooking and the chefs and social media actually came from when I was working at IMAX. And I wanted to explain to other people what I would do on social media, how to do the community management, how to do the content. And it wasn't so easy because it started off very organically. So when I wanted to explain to someone else what I was doing, I actually started making recipes. Making little, as if I was making cooking recipes, but like here are the ingredients, this is what you do, this is how you post something. So that, I thought that was actually quite a good idea, and I've been speaking and doing training for quite a, a long time, even when I was working at IMEX. So I decided to go off on my own, and uh, that was really the, the start of the idea. So event uh, professionals can uh, book you for, as a consultant or to do some of the action as well? Absolutely. So I prefer to stay on the consultancy side or I like, I believe that the best social media comes from inside an organization. So uh, my preference is to train, to look at the strategy and then to uh, figure out the right resources to get social media to really work for an organization. And I really like to separate as well, you know, what's event social media, which is very time specific, very focused and what is sort of a year round community management. And although some of the skills and some of the things you do are, are similar, uh, it actually, you know, there's some stuff that's a little bit different. Tell us a little more about that stuff that is a little <laughs> bit different. <laughs> well, Give us some practical tips. Sure, I think, you know, uh, a lot of it is to do with branding. Uh, you know, and one of the terms that I don't like so much is social media selling. I think a lot of people really ask me, you know, how do I sell tickets on social media? How do I get more business? And I'm not saying it's impossible or you can't do it, but most of what you do on social media normally is about branding. It's about keeping that brand that you build in front of people year round. Uh, and that, you know, for any type of organization, whether it's B2B or B2C, they want to do that on a continuous and a positive way and establish it really as a channel of communication. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram is, is hugely interactive. People really like to have conversations with brands and with people around those brands. When it comes to events, there's that added urgency. Uh, and one of the things that I believe passionately is that our sort of bandwidth around events really decreases once you get close to an event. You know, especially if you're getting a lot of emails, if you're getting a lot of promotion for an event, as you get close to the event, you, you really don't have a lot of patience for a lot of the content that you might as a have consumer. Available. As a consumer, you know, and okay. I think you know you feel the same way when you're setting yeah. up for a show. So much happening, you know, you want those emails, you want any type of communication to be short and sweet. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with social media. So it's about creating that sort of a plan, and it's a little bit counterintuitive because at the start of the event, you might not have that much to say. Maybe the speakers aren't confirmed, the format isn't quite there yet, but that's really when people can really absorb a quite a lengthy story. When you get closer to the event, you're talking about sort of very instant, very visual type of communication. So if you're doing videos, you know, the, the start of the video has to be really impactful. You know, I, I do a lot of videos on LinkedIn just for myself and my own brand. I always try to have something really kind of striking in the background. So if I'm on the road, it's at the airport or it's at in front of Big Ben or something like that. Something that really people go, oh, Miguel is in London. What's yeah. he doing in London? Okay, there's a little, then you gain a little bit more time and you can tell a little bit more of the story. Uh, but it has to be impactful. And I think with images or even anything like text, any kind of content that you want to create around an event, you have to keep that into consideration. So that's uh, what, what this about the stuff that happens before the conference, and, and what about during the conference? Is it is it does it serve any purpose to post uh, about sessions that are happening because the conference is going and it's happening? And it's I think so. Um, I used to post a lot more than I would advise people to post today. You know, I think working at IMAX went through various phases. We used to, you know hundreds of tweets for example and ultimately we kind of got to came to the conclusion that it didn't really work but I'm not saying you shouldn't post at all 
I think really it's more about posting uh, things that you can have a conversation around. So rather than trying to report on everything, uh, maybe if you have somebody who can report from sessions or from things that are happening, get, get to that really important bit. You know, get to that really nice bit of nugget of information that came out of that session. Tweet that, maybe with a photo or something like that. And then uh, see if there's a conversation around that. So rather than trying to put in out lots of little pieces of social media, try to create something that's a little bit more impactful. You know, I think what you do here works quite well. You, know, you make videos that are, that are content pieces. And what I particularly like about what we're doing right now is that we're not talking about what happened today or what I'm doing here at the show. Which or is things, based, Which yeah. is very much like nobody's going to watch that In a year. next week. No. You know, Even but we're week. talking about content we're talking about how to do social media so if this becomes a piece of content that is giving people information and if somebody comes across it no matter what channel you put it on but they come across it on a blog or on youtube or whatever it is and they find it interesting yeah that becomes a conversation they, they starter see the, the meeting show logo in the background and exactly and they say well maybe i should go to this show because it seems to be yeah and it's not like i i, I it's not in detriment of the meeting show but the meeting show is a support for a community that talks around a particular type of content. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to promote this year's show. I, I mean, you could still come tomorrow, which is great, but yeah. it's all about creating those yeah. pieces of content that are interesting, but really work at a later date. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's enough, Miguel. I could talk for hours, but I don't want to make this an hour long this video. This is already a couple of good tips for uh, meeting planners to use. Um, thank Absolutely. you very much. Another thank good you. Day.